well, well. You may disagree, but up to me, it's a fact. You can't run in backs, it ain't no fun in that. Yeah, the sermon about to start, so I hope you know your stats. And if Kev get it wrong, then Rashad gon' have his back with, with the facts. Matter of fact, all we do is say wins. When wins, congregation say hey. Right, we're gonna preach Kev, preach with Rashad. We are prophets in the episode, another sermon. Coming at you from Wildcard Sports here on Wildcard TV. Rashad, we made it to the end. The NFC North, uh, the last the last division of, of our profit playoff theory. What's going on, man? Yeah, we're here, man. We got what college football did week zero this past weekend. Had a couple of games on. Um, we got the official kickoff this upcoming weekend and the NFL next weekend. So it's going to be an interesting yeah. football season, man. It's about time to get it kicked off. You got – I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's coming back just because I'm tired of all this BS on TV, stupid Jake Paul and all that crazy mess on TV. <laughs> um, I know the other weekend we had the, the Pacquiao fight. I mean, I think he may come back for one more. I mean, if, if I'm Pacquiao, I'll try to get me a, a Conor McGregor fight, get one more money grab, and then get up out of here before I run for president. But I'm, I'm <laughs> sick of the, the Jake Paul them thing. I mean, I ain't mad to get money. They're getting the money. They get, you can't, yeah, they're getting the money now. Yeah, I'm just kind of sick of that taking up all the weekend, man. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. To go ahead and get some real action back going. I'm about to say, uh, I'm... All the real boxing for the summer got messed up. You know, Spence had to opt out. The Wilder Fury fight got postponed. So all the, the real boxing UFC stuff kind of got delayed. But we got football back now. So they'll kind of get the the weekends and everything back jumping. You know, Thursday night football. Yes, Saturday, sir. Sunday, Monday. Yes, sir. I'm so excited. <laughs> you got me. So you got really excited out. right now. <laughs> You got fantasy football ad drop, free agency during the week. So, football every day, man. I'm about to say, yeah. So, I mean, at this time, the fifth, fifth three man roster will be complete. Um, when the NFC North episode dropped on the seventh, you should have the QB competitions coming to a close. Who's going to start in all the other divisions that we talked about? Um, including this division that got that they got QB problems, uh, you know, starting with the uh, Chicago Bears. Um, and that's where we'll start with our playoff profit playoff theory. Um, man, it's 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 three teams. I mean, it's three guys over there. Obviously, Nick Foles is going to be the third string. Um, but with Andy Dalton, they drafted Justin Fields, who fell in there to, into their lap. That I guess that really is the biggest thing about the Bears because Mitch, they made the playoffs what twice I think with Mister Bisky, and yeah. and so so I mean, I, and we both don't think he's nowhere near not a top twenty five, not even a top thirty quarterback in the league. So if you can make the playoffs with him, all you need is you know solid QB play, and you're right there. I mean, you have the defense, but they're but but they haven't gotten any better, right? Then then you got Allen Robinson, you got a receiver who's getting better in Mooney, but you got you know Jimmy Graham. So you you got the same team for the last two seasons, three seasons, and you're trying to capitalize, you know, why you got these guys, right? So I I think I think they had to get this right, and honestly. I, whether it's Andy Dalton or it's Justin Fields, I feel like it's a significant upgrade from last season with Mr. Biscuits. Because coming into this, you know, when we talk about ranking quarterbacks in the division, we had—I mean, it wasn't even—it wasn't even a debate who was last in the division. Like when you got guys like Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, and last year with Matthew Stafford, Trubisky don't doesn't hold us, you know, a candlestick to this to this division. So, um, but even with that being said. We still find them ranking the quarterback number four, but now it's not. But now it don't seem as bad. Yeah, I'm not gonna go full blown bash and Mitch Trubisky. I mean, I'm I'm more disappointed that they they thought Nick Foles was the answer. I mean, he started some games for him. I think he went two and five in his starts. I mean, Trubisky gave them a a better chance right. to win. That's true. Um, uh, I think he was two and five, so he was six and three in the games he started. Um, decent with the ball. I think he had 16 TDs, eight INTs, stuff like that. He did give you the the element with his legs to succeed. Right. So, I mean, that uh, that played a part. Of course, you got a stout defense. Um, but, yeah, the Bears, they're in a weird little spot QB situation-wise. They, they signed Andy and promised him the job outright that he would be – the day one starter. So I think as a coach and staff and organization to not appear as a liar, you have to at least honor that for week one, whether you just let him play a half and get beat the hell up by the Rams or, <laughs> or you let him take all the lumps 
for the entire first two games, whatever the case may be, I think you they're going to honor their commitment to Andy. They signed him. I think he will start, and then they'll kind of see, um, you know, what's the right point to throw Justin Fields in there because that's basically what this is all about. This whole – I think the whole season is going to be spent towards developing Fields as a QB of the future. You know, yeah. Nagy, and, Nagy and crew, their uh, their seat is somewhat hot, but, I mean, I guess you don't want to have it too hot. You did make the playoffs in two or three years, and that was with Trubisky um, to varying degrees of success. Um, so I, I just think they're going to have to figure out the QB thing. Um, the Bears have never had a significant QB. I mean, no, <laughs> Rex Roseman, Jay Cutler, Kyle Orton, similar to the Broncos, you just start rattling off names, Nick Foles, Trubisky. Like they've just been patching it up, patching it up, patching it up. So you're hoping that uh, Justin Fields is the guy. It's just a matter of when you decide to put him in and go for it. They were 8-8 eight eight last year in the playoff team. Um, let's see. Most of the roster – return for the most part that's what they can do i'm about to say so so vegas vegas has the bears at seven and a half so right there as saying that they're a mediocre you know 500 ball club a team again um whether that's you know whether that's 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 eight and nine nine and eight that's what that's where they seem to find themselves uh from the vegas line um uh, the bear the bear and, and we just talked about it like they really haven't gotten any better you you're bringing the same team um or like you know like it is running it back Always the, the good situation. Sometimes maybe so, maybe not. Um, but like you said, like Mitch had the ability with the legs, and that's the, the Andy, Andy does not right. Uh, but Andy is a guy who can right the ship, you know, steer a little bit. He may not take you over the top, um, but he can reach you there. I mean, when he's Cincinnati, for the most part, I mean they made the playoffs, winning winning quarterback over there. They just couldn't win in playoffs when it counted. Um, but like you said, it's it's more of the Justin Fields long haul. That is where, that is where we're going here. And and like you said, so let's just say if Andy Dalton starts for Week One, where do you see Justin Fields? I love playing the rookie the rookie guest game because once again, every first round draft pick outside of Jordan Love now is uh has played uh in in their, in their first season. So, um, I mean. We 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 look at the schedule. He said Vegas said Vegas got him going seven and a half wins. Uh, we look at the schedule. It is it's not it's not scary. Um, but when you have the NFC West, uh, that's always you know tough games. You got AFC North. That's that's more tough games. So that that playing those divisions is is tough, right? And on top of that, they get they get uh you know they get at Vegas. Uh, they go there, uh, which you know could be a trap game of, of some sort. So. Uh, you know where did, did any any game that jump out to you to say okay this is the game probably Justin Fields need to go go ahead and just play because it, either you let Dalton go half the season or you just go ahead and rip the bandaid off and put him in. It's gonna be sooner than later. I mean, I, I liked Andy when he was with Cincinnati. He had some success there, but the last couple of years with the Bengals, then just what went on with the Cowboys. He um and they had too many offensive weapons and he wasn't successful there. I don't think he'll have this job long in Chicago. Week two, four, or five, you should be seeing Justin Fields at the starter. I mean, that's against the Bengals, against the Lions, or at the Raiders. Week two, four, or five, Justin Fields is going to be the starter. And, and they won't be in there long. I mean, you got David Montgomery who can run the ball. They're going to kind of take a pressure like off Justin Fields. Um, Allen Robinson, no matter who his QB is, he used to put him for a thousand yards. Uh, yeah. Hopefully – Justin Fields is the guy that can kind of help him have some solid QB play going forward. Um, you expect Mooney to take a leap. They haven't been having a solid second second receiver. Uh, we thought uh, Anthony Miller's going to be that guy, but he never did develop into what we thought he would be. Shit, um, shit so maybe Mooney's off. the guy. The shit this ass off yeah. of Houston. <laughs> yeah, so maybe Mooney's the guy. We'll kind of see. Um, they have, I mean, they're, they're solid in most positions, so – uh, 500 balls being forecasted, but I just think with the schedule and some other stuff, they're gonna have to navigate. Uh, I really can't see them clearing that that over. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, I'm I'm right at the line, so seven and a half. I'm right there at seven. Um, I think they'll just be a like I said, just be an average team. Um, you know, and whether whether they Justin Fields come in and ride the ship or he going he's going to take the rookie slumps is one of the two. So, um, I. Like I don't want to sound like a hater, but like I am not the biggest Justin Fields fan. Um, 
I, that that just that just from what I, I mean from what I've seen, I, I just I just don't know. If, I, maybe because people are saying he's a superstar, or you know they, they they're upset that he didn't go to number two and he didn't go uh, to, to the Jets. But it, regardless of that feeling, he's in a great situation. He's in the best situation than any other quarterback, rookie quarterback, in my opinion, just because you got a you got a ready made team who's already good. And all you got to do is be solid. You don't have to do. You don't. You don't have to carry a franchise like Trevor Lawrence had to do. Uh, change the narrative in New York like Zach Wilson got to do. So, with, the, with that being said, it's like, yeah, you didn't go two, right? Or you didn't go this four downers, but you, you you didn't fall into a bad spot. Yeah, I, I think he has the third best situation. I, I think the Trey Lance and Mac Jones situations are better. The four ers they their offense is kind of built for Trey Lance. I mean, That's they true. had Alex Smith, and they moved on to Colin Kaepernick. Garoppolo has been successful. He just doesn't have that that running element. So the only thing about Lance is he ain't played competitive football in basically two years. So right. you have to get some time and down. I think Mac Jones' situation is better than than um, Justin Fields too, just because you do know you have steady coaching in Belichick, steady coaching from Josh McDaniels. They spent money in free agency to get. John Lewis, Henry, yeah. Aguilar, you got Damian Harris. I mean, you uh, you just have so many things. You got guys coming back from the COVID opt-out list, solid defense. So I just think those – and plus that division is just way easier to overcome than trying to sneak past Green Bay, Minnesota. So I just think those two are in better situations than Justin Fields right now. But I, I think his isn't bad, but just not knowing the stable future of Nagy. Will he be back? Will he not be back? When are okay. you going to start, not start? Allen Robinson's on the franchise tab. Will he come back? Will he not come back? They just have too many things going on. All right, I can I can go with that. That's fine. I can go with that. I, I, I definitely forgot Trey Lance for the honors. That's probably that's, that, that's more of a slam dunk than anything. Um, we need a team <laughs> a team that that was bad but not bad. So um, let's move on to the Detroit Lions. Uh, man, um, <laughs> I don't even know what to talk about because. I mean, from top to bottom, it ain't. It's 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 a whole. It's 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 a mess, right? I mean, you traded you traded your your, your franchise quarterback. You well, probably outside of Barry Sanders, I maybe forgetting some names down the line, but I mean, Barry Sanders, Megatron. He's he's a top three player of, of, of Detroit Lions of all time, or something like that, and definitely the best quarterback of all time. And now you got Jerry Goff. Um, you bring in over the the GM is from the the Rams, so you would think he's trying to build that that Super Bowl team again. Try to see if you can if you can do something with that. I would say the line. The only thing I like about Lions is they're building the right way, which is in the trenches. Like their D line and the offensive line are the best two things about them. Um, so if that's where if that's where you're going to start from, I can live with that. I can live with if you're going to start over. So, but you know, will the draft picks of Swift, um, Akuda, um who did draft uh, you know, T.J. Hawkinson? Would all those first round draft picks mean something? And you know that that's where it has to come in. And can Jared Goff change his narrative of you know uh, Stafford uh, uh, McVay couldn't do what he wanted to do because Goff was so inept? So can Goff change that? So I mean that's really what you have to see coming into this season. Um, outside of the trenches, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with their head coach Dan Campbell at all. Um, so I mean I know obviously. You will want to get a guy like Airbnb, me, but why would he leave Chiefs to go to this to a shit show? So Dan Campbell, I he says crazy things that I'm really not into. And uh I don't know if players are gonna like run through walls for him. I don't I don't know. And and, and maybe I'm just tripping, but outside the trenches, I don't really got nothing to say. Oh man, the Lions are gonna lie in. This is just typical Detroit Lions. Um they've been one of the worst franchises around for a long time. I, mean, I think Matt Stafford was the main reason they were competitive in so many games. I mean, he was holding together the best he could. I think their real downfall came once they moved on from Jim Caldwell. They were 11-5, 7-9, 9-7, 9-7. I mean, you were above 500 three or four years making the playoffs, made the playoffs twice. And I think you just kind of set the franchise back from – I don't want to say going to the next level, but just from potentially being a steady franchise, you kind of set them back by going to Patricia, 
I mean, you never got past six wins, <laughs> and then you find. <laughs> Jim Caldwell. So, I mean, I don't, I mean, he won five, three, six. I mean, come on, man. That's, that's 14 games. Caldwell won 14 games in no time. So I, I, I think that move set him back. Um, this Dan Campbell thing, I, I don't know what they were hoping to do with this. I mean, he's, he's a raw, raw guy. If this was college, I, I'd be all in on him that the raw, raw stuff goes well in college, but just with the, these are these are NFL pros, so they're all talented guys. Like these are the best of the best. They're all right. talented, but for the purposes of thirty-two teams, <laughs> you have the least amount of talent in the league outside of the Houston Texans. So I don't see this year going well. One to three wins at max. I mean, yeah, the, the- you have NFC West schedule, the AFC North schedule. I, I still have respect for Jared Goff. I like him. Um, but going from Cali to Detroit, you you play inside, but it's going to be a lifestyle change, culture change for a West Coast guy. Um, the schedule is going to be brutal. You're going to be facing tough defenses basically every week. Every week. Every so, week. <laughs> I mean, you got, you got a rookie O lineman in Pene Sewell. You don't have much on the receiving end. TJ Hawkins is going to be your best weapon. Uh, then Tyrell Williams. They released Bashar so, Pre- uh, Perriman. So he didn't even make the team. I thought he was one of the best receivers on the team. <laughs> so yeah, so, they, this is this is gonna be interesting. I only say interesting. It, it, it's just gonna be a rough year for the Lions. Yeah, I, I have no interest one, in one, one, one to three wins. I mean, I guess you hope you can build upon something for the next coach or for next year with Campbell. But he's a raw right guy. I don't, I don't see this going well. Just good luck to them. <laughs> good luck to them boys. <laughs> uh, I mean, because. If you look at his schedule outside of a home game versus Cincinnati, a home game versus Philly, um, I mean their season highlight is always just playing on Thanksgiving Day. So just good luck to them. At Atlanta, I don't, I don't think, I think that's disrespectful to Atlanta. They, they don't be surprised if this is one of the teams that go zero and sixteen. They already, they already done it once. Um, can it if because Joe Burrow Joe Burrow played the Lions, he the best quarterback on the field. Um, you know, and you know, I feel like outside of Detroit versus Chicago, that could always be a drop game for them. But yeah, I'm with you, man. One to one to three wins. Vegas has them at four and a half. I say take the under and you smash the under on that one. Like, I don't see them getting four. So so I don't think they're getting four. So you can you can comfortably take that four and a half. Take that to the bank. Um, run with that. Um, yeah, they they should go ahead and have a twenty twenty two draft board. Though. Are we going Spencer Rattler? What are we doing at QB? Are we going O line best defensive player? Let's just they should be looking at twenty twenty two draft. Let's see what. Let's just see how these guys in college play mm-hmm. and then start building the board. And see what we can do. I was about to say outside of quarterback, they probably go that uh, Thibodeau guy from Oregon, the pass rusher, or maybe Stingley Jr. Because if Akuda don't pan out. He just he got to try again. I mean, because of the money, Jared Goff may be the answer going going forward. But that's going to depend upon how he looked this season because I don't think he's going to be able to look good with, with what's around him. Yeah. That's just – yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to spend too much time on my lines. Uh, like, you, like you said, good luck to them boys because they're going to need every bit of it. Um, let's move over to the uh, Green Bay Packers who won the division last year. Uh, also – Hold home of the MVP, where we didn't know whether he was going to be on the team or not. It looks like he's staying on the Packers at least for one more season. Um, they didn't pay Devontae Adams yet, but they are they are they already broke the number one rule shot. They paid Aaron Jones. They paid a running back after drafting AJ Dillon in the second round. So. I still don't know. I I don't know what they're trying to do. Are they trying to is is uh, Lafleur trying to build the Tennessee Titans and get a Derrick Henry? He don't want an Aaron Jones. I, I I don't. I really don't understand what they're trying to do. But the twenty six and six, um, you know, like I said, one one uh made playoffs two years in a row, uh, great record, and you know a great a pretty good roster. I mean, the the Smith brothers. You got Jared Alexander, one of the best corners in the game. Darnell Savage, Kenny Clark, like you got, you got guys, you got guys, and uh, this Packers team is uh, 
it all predicated around one guy, Aaron Rodgers, right? So um, still don't understand the Jordan Love pick. I guess we'll figure it out next year when we're talking about this, this division as far as what how the Packers are looking next year. But it's all about Aaron Rodgers this year. He go. He probably gonna go one last hurrah. They brought in Randall Cobb, which you know I thought that was a pretty good addition as well. So uh, Packers, Packers, man, uh, what you got? What you got for them? Their whole off season was sitting around Lily or Lily not. Um, Aaron Rodgers has decided to come back. Yeah. Um, their their last two two seasons ended in the NFC title game. They. I don't know, man. I think some bridges have really been been burned. Um, I think Lafleur is a solid coach, but I'm wondering how much trust Aaron Rodgers has in him because he took the ball out of his hands in, in that game against the Bucks. Um, we know they were obliterated twice by the 49ers. The whole contract fiasco, just the, the Jordan Love situation, why they drafted him instead of going for immediate improvement, um, not really adding any help, I mean. The best thing they've done for Aaron Rodgers is just getting back Randall Cobb in the last couple of years, and that's not that's not good. I mean, I mean Randall Cobb is a great dude, been a very very productive receiver, but he's on his last legs. I oh, mean, yeah. so I don't I don't know how Green Bay can overcome this because we know there's a fracture in <laughs> between the front office and the locker room. And you have to start to think that the locker room is going to always side with the players because they know these are billionaires and we're millionaires. So yeah. you got to think Aaron Rodgers and Devontae, they're going to they're gonna side together. Yeah, Aaron Jones got his money. Great for him as an RB to get your money. But over the long haul, he may end up getting the boot out of there. Man, they just show us the signs. It's going to be the RB1. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to just enjoy this season, man. I'm going to enjoy watching Green Bay every chance I get because this is, I think, this is the last time we'll see Aaron Rodgers in the green and yellow. Yeah. His last time going to Lambeau Field. There, There's no way he comes back next year. So I'm going to just enjoy the show. Hopefully they have a, a good year. Um, but I just think it's too much turmoil going on between front office and roster. Of course, they're all professionals. I think Aaron will still go out there and play his best ball. Right. Um, can he repeat his MVP performance? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't think he's – of course, by the calendar, he's getting old. But at the same time, he sat so many years behind Brett Favre that, I mean, it says he's a like 15-year pro. Well, he really I mean, like 11. <laughs> I mean, he missed like – he didn't miss. He didn't, he didn't play for three years um, because of Brett Favre, and then he was hurt, I think, 2017. He only played about seven, eight games that year. So, roughly, he's not even a full 15, 16-year pro. So, of course, I still he got plenty left in the tank. Oh, he's yeah. one of the best guys with the ball. I mean, he only has two years where he has over 10 interceptions. The last couple of years, hey, that's he's been five, that, four, that two, six. I mean – I mean, this dude interception numbers are, are low. He's he's great with the ball. Uh, he has. I mean, I think he has some of the best all time stats. Yeah, yeah. For anybody, I, I mean, you got over four hundred touchdown passes and don't even have a hundred ints yet. And if he continue on the same trend he's on, he'll probably hit four forty to four fifty this year, and still won't have a hundred ints because he only throw five to seven a year. See, and that and that's the thing, like. So, we we both can, we both can agree. Brady is the most accomplished, probably, and we would say the goat. That's that's Tom Brady. But when it comes to physical, like attributes, like Rogers, probably the best quarterback I've ever seen. I think he's up there with I think Dan Marino is up there too, and Pat Mahomes is on the way. I think those oh, yeah. three to me are like the best quarterback when it comes to arm strength, mobility, all that kind of stuff. I like those three the best, but. And Rodgers as my number one, and for for a guy who's tormented the Vikings, tormented the Lions and Bears for so many years, like I, I like what you said, like you just going to you just have to enjoy it because I I still don't think they're I don't think they're twenty six and six good. Like I think Aaron Rodgers is so great that he's like he's making them twenty six and six in the last two seasons. Like you you take Aaron Rodgers out. And you just replace him with 
It don't have to be a great. You put Tannehill guys. We believe at the bottom of the top ten. Kirk Cousins, the Justin Herbert. I don't think they they don't win. They don't win eleven. You know what I'm saying? And, and like they might be a nine and seven, a ten and six team. And you're talking about two games. You know, a game away from the Super Bowl two years in a row. This is this is the this is it. Like the last dance. I don't know if you saw them post that. Uh, Michael Jordan and uh, Scottie Pippen pitcher, um, him and um, Devontae Adams, but that's what they're saying. Like this, is the last dance. This, this, this is it. They know. They know. They know. And they know. And if you Adams, I don't even know why Adams are you talking to them. I'm not. I'm not coming back. Aaron Rodgers not coming back. I don't care how much money I lose on the table. I'm not doing it right. because you don't want to be like Allen Robinson. You don't want to be like D Hop for most of his career. Like I, I, I want that quarterback. I want to have my quarterback. I want to choose. Where I want to go. And you know, so that that's that's. That is, this is the last dance. Enjoy the Green Bay Packers uh, while you can. Aaron Rodgers, number 12, wearing that uniform because this probably is his last season. Uh, Vegas had them at 10 wins. We both had them at 10 wins exactly. So this is a, a, void, a void situation. Obviously, 13-3 and three the last two seasons. So you probably would lean the over. But like what Rashad said with the, with the bridges that, that are burned and fractured, should you even mess with it? Probably not, because you, you never know one. Like you never know what's going to be the straw that's going to break the camel's back, and and that's that's why I would avoid the Packers. But ten and seven, still I still think they're a playoff team. Uh, you can never count on Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I just think they have a couple of games that are tough. Um, they should start off two and zero, Saints Lions, but um, their road trip to the Forty ers that's always been a tough one. Um, so I think they may drop that one. The Pittsburgh game week four is going to be interesting. Um, you're going to get Arizona and Kansas City on the road back to back weeks. Then you come back home for Seattle. You go to Minnesota, your division rival, and then you come back home for the Rams. That's a tough stretch right there. And then you get you got to do it at Baltimore. So a lot of tough games. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is I think one of the five best QBs ever. Um, he can he can do great things. For this franchise, like you said, by the last two years, going thirteen and three, well, I think they have a little bit of dip on the win total this year. Yeah, from week eight to week sixteen, no gimmies. And I mean, even a defense like going up, uh, they and have Washington. Washington they Washington right before that. So week seven, week seven to week week sixteen, no gimmies. Um, coming because because Chicago is still still always holds a threat, and you never know. We never, we never, we never know. When, with the, we talked about the QBs earlier. We never know if Dalton and Fields is enough to get him over the hump. So, no, no gimmies. I, I think Green Bay start off pretty good at New Orleans, uh, Detroit, um, at Cincinnati. I feel like they'll they're, they're start off fine. Like you said, they probably gonna get what if, if we see. All right, so I'm gonna ask you this: Does anything change about your viewpoint on the Packers if they go in Week Three and beat 49ers? Does, does, does that change your viewpoint of how good the Packers gonna be this year? No, it won't. Okay, because you know when you get you get walks, uh, your ass kicked two two years in a row. Like it's a domination, and you go in here and make a statement week three. You know, it's I mean it's it's at least it may give them that turn the tide. Like we beat these guys, or we can do something. So we'll see. I mean, you, if it's, a, if it's right. a convincing win, yeah, but just uh, just for the most part, not really. I mean, it's still early in the year, so you got to still take it with somewhat. Of a grain of salt because everybody hasn't gotten rolling yet. Right. What else? Some some COVID things pop up, or you just never know. So it, it, it'll depend upon the situation. So I wouldn't put too much stock into it if they were to beat the 49ers. Gotcha. So we got Packers tennis, like I said, ten and seven. Both had the, we both had identical records. Uh yeah, both both going three and two after the bye. So that that being pretty impressive when you got Chicago, Baltimore, Cleveland, Minnesota, um, as four four of those five games. Uh, let's move on to the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, my Minnesota Vikings. Um, the, the, this, this, this is the only setup I got for them is, is that it's an odd year. Uh, when you look into the um, the history since Mike Zimmer been there, 2014 is first year. There was a uh, 500 ball club. 16, there was 500. Uh, 18, there was 500. And 2020, I think it was, uh, what, 79 last year. So basically around a 500 team. But in those odd years, that's when you had the the the, the Diggs miracle. Um, they was I think they had ten wins one season where uh, Blair Walsh missed the field goal against Seattle, um, and then they had the game where they got uh, killed by the Eagles in the interception game. So you you got you got you got those years in the middle penciled in where they're up they're up 
or they right there average around the league. So um, that's really that's really all you can say, and that's why this year's odd for me. So I, I lean to more them getting that double digit win season this year. Um, you bring back a great defense now because last year I think they were top five in scoring as far as in the NFC. Uh, you know, top ten offense, of course, um, but they were top five in scoring, like up there with the Buccaneers, the Packers. But their problem was they were giving up <laughs> the top five in the league uh, points. So they they were not good defense. They Kirk Cousins would put up thirty five points and they lose by ten. You know, so you you can't you can't win that way. So with the addition of Pat Peterson, uh, you bring Daniel Hunter back, Shutter Richardson, uh, you bring uh, Pierce who was on the team last year but set up a COVID. You bring him and you bring Thompson. You got and Everson Griffin just came back. So you got a nasty front four again, um, a good secondary, uh, and Kendricks, who's one of the best linebackers in the game. So I think if the de- I think that's all they're needing is the defense to come now. I feel like the Vikings have been the team where the defense great, Vikings the offense stagnant, or vice versa, where the offense great and the defense terrible. If they can ever put it together, that's the only way you can get some magic to happen. You see what happened the Case Keenum year. Um, and that's that, that's really that's really all you, all you is to it. If they can both put a top ten performance on both sides of the ball, this could be one of the best teams in the league. Um, the one thing I can say they did they did try to address their weaknesses. They they filled in some holes on defense. Uh, I think they used three of the four pick three of the four draft picks well, the top ones on offensive players, but they signed like five or six guys for defense. So they were trying to make sure they got. Better, I mean, they don't want to come back in the <laughs> the same fate as last year. Of course, right. some injuries were there and stuff like that. Um, they do have a new offensive coordinator, uh, so let's see how that plays out. Garrett Kubiak retired. Um, I think it's his, his son, his son Kubiak. Over, yeah. yeah, so so he should run a similar system. Uh, I don't think he'll change too much. Um, you got one of the best RBs in the game, Dalvin Cook. Justin Jefferson was a, a rocket year one, so year two, you're hoping he doesn't go through a, a sophomore slump. Dealing, veteran guy, always a threat underneath and in the red zone. So offensively, you should still be stout. Uh, you got some young guys up front, the Brad Barrys, the O'Neills. They should be solid up front for Kirk and Dalvin Cook. Uh, I want to see what happens on defense, though. I think gotta, they got to improve that defense. Yeah. I mean, I think – I think Zimmer said that was the worst defense he's ever coached in any capacity. So yeah. you gotta improve was, <laughs> improve that. As a fan, it was very hard to watch just because like you had your Harrison Smith and Kendricks from you know from the year before, but everybody else was new starters. Like you were starting two rookies on the outside, you were starting um fourth and fifth round draft picks on the D line. Like that's you know, any any like like we always say, man. When you name a great coaches, they have always had great players. And when you're playing the fourth and fifth round picks, yeah, okay, you might get your shirt Richard Sherman's every now and then, but how often does that happen, right? How often do you have a, a all pro corner who come in the fifth round? So, you know, with that being said, it's like, okay, now that they got their guys back, you expect the turnaround. So so with with the expectation of the turnaround, um, the Vegas has them at nine and a half. So right there on that line saying are you saying they're a 10, 10 win season, a ten win season in an odd year, or are they right below it where they're doing their pretty much their you know five hundred ball? So that and that's where they've been at for the last what since two thousand fourteen has ever been there, very high or right there in the middle. So uh, I guess I guess the good thing is you don't have no no lows, <laughs> but but you know if you can stay more consistent toward the top, that's where you want to be. You want to be with the Packers, who you fight in your division with, you know, always winning 10 games. But, you know, that's the difference between Aaron Rodgers and a Kirk Cousins. So as we look at the schedule, like I said, it's it's, it's a tough schedule. I mean, the NFC North got the AFC West, I mean, AFC North and the NFC West. Two two divisions that we think are the t- best two in the, you know, in the league. So, um, but they also got a third place schedule. So instead of getting, you know, instead of getting uh, Kansas City in the, you know, that the 17th game, they get the Chargers, which, you know, Justin Herbert is a problem now, but you know you get Baltimore on the road. You got to see you got to see Arizona on the road early uh, for the first time ever. It feels like you get Seattle at home, um, but you know you do get you do get your two gimmies with Detroit. Um, maybe you can maybe you can beat Dallas at home 
with the, with the crowd back into it. You got you know, at San Francisco, which you know the trenches is where they dominate. So if the 49ers can do the same thing they did at Green Bay, they probably do the same thing in Minnesota there too. So uh, I got I got Minnesota at eleven um, with the chance to with the chance to be a great team. But I, I got them. I got them going uh, one and one and three in their last four games. Uh, where I got an at Chicago Rams at Green Bay Chicago game where, you know, it just it's just hard to get wins in, in this in this in this type of scheduling. So uh, I, I got I got them going eleven six, uh, slightly above the Vegas total. So um, I think it's gonna be a pretty good season. Uh, this would definitely be a bet I'm avoiding. I think they'll go. Oh, nine hell yeah. and eight. <laughs> I'm not taking like, it. <laughs> I think I think they're going nine and eight. I just think the schedule has some pitfalls that that could just happen. Um, early by, I always hate early by. You get Cowboys at Baltimore at Chargers, Green Bay, fly to, to the 49ers. That's a tough five game stretch, and then you'll kind of get um, Detroit, but then you got to finish up again with the Bears twice. Who knows how that plays out? with the Rams and Green Bay sandwiched in between. Uh, they'll be in contention for the playoffs more than likely, but I think down the stretch, depending upon the tiebreakers, they could falter. And they, they, they'll they either barely make it or barely miss it. But it's a bit I'm definitely avoiding. Um, I just don't see how they can get up into the 11, 12, 13 wins. They should be somewhere between their Vegas, around their Vegas projection of 9, maybe 10, 11. Yeah. But even with so many good teams in the NFC, that may not be enough to get in because it's the NFC is. I mean, I think yeah. you got to think at least you got to win your team. You, you got to you got to win your division. You, you got to win the division. Like that's just what it is. Like Vikings versus Green Bay. Because if if we both believe in the NFC West, which y'all everybody should heard the episode by now, um, if we believe in the NFC West like we do, and then we believe the Cowboys and Washington would be good teams. Well, your your room start falling out before you even get to the NFC North. So, um, and that's not even to mention the Buccaneers, who's going to be an automatic lock. So, you know, so you got you got to win your division. Um, and when it comes down to it, these probably are the two teams that's going to go neck and neck. They got a week sixteen game, a uh, week seventeen game that's going to go down to the wire. And of course, Green Bay gets Detroit after that. So that's going to be a dub no matter what. And then Vikings get Bears, where they're going to have to go play and w- win that game. So. You know, it, and it might come down today. It might come down to week seventeen. And if we, if you're gonna pistol in Green Bay and win Detroit, Vikings got to show up. And you know that, and that might that may could tip the side of who wins the division. So, oh, that, that's gonna that's gonna be. A, I think that's gonna be a good race. Um, you know, the the Rodgers versus Zimmer uh, matchups. Like I love watching those th- those games because it's it's, it's uh, as a great coach on the defensive side trying to manipulate. One of the greatest quarterbacks ever is just like always fun to watch. Like you love watching Bill Belichick versus Mahomes just to see what kind of things can he throw at somebody like that. So I think that's the same kind of same kind of team you got with these two guys, especially when they play twice a year. So um, that 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 pretty much wraps up the uh, profit playoff theory. Um, So with the the, the, these these next these next few next few that I get the rest of the show, we're going to talk about the actual what the theory says is going to happen. Versus what we think is going to happen, um, and then we'll see at the end at the end of the season uh, where we at. Last year we was we was round. I think the theory was seventy five percent correct, uh, predicting, predicting the Browns in the playoffs. Um, I think I think it had. Um, I mean, of course, teams like Cowboys messed up when they yeah. messed up like that. Right. So the Cowboys, so yeah, the Cowboys won messed it up, and they still was one game away um, with Dak Prescott getting injured. So yeah, those kind of factors did play a part. Um, so. I'm gonna stay in the NFC. Um, here are the the seven teams that that the that the NFC uh, profit playoff theory has predicted to make the playoffs. So here we go: uh, a lock, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, with the best coach or second best coach and the best quarterback in their division. We got the Packers, which you know, we just talked about the NFC North. Uh, we got Lafleur as our as a top two coach, and Rodgers the best quarterback that so they're in. Uh, Rams. Um, I think we on the NFC West episode we was pretty much consensus on where McVay was at, um, you know, around that two spot with uh, Stafford being the second best quarterback behind behind Russell Wilson, Dallas Cowboys, that Prescott. I think we talked about how big of a drop that QB spot was uh, between the rest of the division. Um, the Vikings are in in it based off the theory uh, with a top two quarterback, a top two coach in that division. Seattle makes it with Russell Wilson. 
a Pete Carroll combination. And at seven, the Washington football team. Uh, coming in, coming in at seven, and it has 49ers and the Saints eight and nine looking in. Um, so let's talk about that for a minute. So, you know, Buccaneers, Packers, Rams, Cowboys, Seattle, uh, Vikings all go along with the theory. Washington as well because we got Rivera what number one in the NFC yeah. East, and we got Fitzpatrick. If not, you know, I think I got him too. I think you had you had him too as well, or you had Daniel Jones right above him. I had Daniel Jones right right there above him. Okay, so, uh, but we talk about the Washington. He's got, the roster is slightly better than the Giants, so you know that that gives him a nod. So I, I guess I guess when it comes down to it, so uh, I think I think we both we both know Buccaneers are a lot. Uh, that the, the NFC South is just not just not like talented enough to overcome what the Buccaneers have. Uh, we just talked about the NFC North between the Packers and the Vikings, and we're talking about how the winner the winner is going to be in, obviously, but like the the loser is going to be fighting to try to get in. Um, and because the NFC West is so deep, we got two NFC West teams in by the theory, and the four nine at the eight seed barely missing it. Um, but I think we both can agree. You have the four nine at thirteen wins. I got them at twelve wins. With that fourth place schedule we talked about in the last in the NFC West episode, the four Niners somehow they got to get in there. Um, the theory don't believe it, but I think we both strongly believe that the four Niners somehow have to get in. So, um, on my my personal uh, rankings of how I did everything, I had Seattle missing the playoffs. So I have every I had all the same teams: Buccaneers, Packers, all them guys. And instead of Seattle, I got four Niners in. No, I have uh, six of the same seven. I have the Bucks in. I have the Rams in. Well, Bucks NFC South winner. I have the Rams winning the NFC West. Cowboys winning the NFC East. Green Bay winning the NFC North. And then the wild card, I have the 49ers, Seattle, and Washington. Okay, so we at least, so we got the same top eight. Um, we we both had the Saints barely missing it. Um, but I think I think that be now nah, I'm trying to say like why like why I, the, I, the Saints part of the down. I got the Cardinals and Vikings at eight and nine. I think the Saints come okay. out seven win mm. So yeah, yeah, I so I have I have so theory theory have Saints at nine. I have I'm with you, I have Arizona above the Saints as well. Um so I, I think I think I think when it comes down to it, that I mean that really clears what it says. Kyler Murray versus Jamie Winston slash Tyson Hill. I, I think Sean Payton's gonna be he has, to, he has to put on a great coaching performance for him to get this team to the playoffs. He has to be Mike Tomlin esque when it comes down to it. When you know when Big Ben went down that year, you got to find some way to use be all defensive, um, take your shots, and hopefully, hopefully, you're not limited at QB. Whether that's James Winston throwing a lot of picks or is it Taysom Hill not being good enough to be to to make plays. So, uh, with that being said, that's probably why we both had Saints so far out. But the theory. Likes the roster. They like Sean Payton. So that's why they had them above Arizona. Yeah, I mean, our combined ratings always average out, and that's how we kind of get to what the individuals say versus to what, right. you know, what the numbers say. So, yeah, numbers-wise, on, on the averages, that's how it plays out. But, of course, when you take into account certain factors of 49ers roster was banged up and hurt last year, they're getting everybody back healthy this year. A fourth place schedule. Cowboys were banged up last year, and just their their roster improvements, things like that. Uh, just, just certain things, kind of you have to take into account that will kind of swap out a team or two here or there on the yeah. the personal side versus the the average outside. I'll say this: this this Dak Prescott injury um, has been a little bit more serious now that they're talking about it. Um, and I, I think it's the same thing. We talked about it last year. We liked Andy Dalton um, as, a, as a backup QB, but he didn't really perform like like he should have. So if that Prescott is, cannot be, you know, solid enough to, you know, to have that leap above Daniel Jones, a leap above, you know, Fitzpatrick, um, that's the only one I can see forecasting, looking out for like, like right now. Like, okay, it might not work out because I don't believe in none of the, the Cowboys – Quarterbacks, uh, there's, there, it's crazy to me that Cowboys have not traded for a QB yet, and 
And maybe I'm I'm speaking into the existence, and you're listening to the show, and you you oh they they got somebody now. So maybe maybe that's the, maybe that's the, maybe that, that's what's gonna happen. But you would yeah, think Minshew just went in division to the Eagles. They could have got they could have got Minshew for a six. They could have you got you gotta think they're called. For Nick Foles or somebody, you know Joe Flacco. I I, I don't know anybody because I, I mean yeah, but you can't go with the guys you got. There's no way you go with the guys you got. I might uh, get my boy. I don't, I don't know about calling them though. I might I might call my boy Brody Crow, man. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not, I just stop. I might I might get uh what's what's the, what's the OC name they had? A couple uh, last year, I think he coached Boys State now. Kellen Moore. I might get Kellen yeah, Moore back out here in, in a jersey because the Nuche and all them guys. I'm not I'm not buying it, but. So that that's really the only one I can see that's that you know obviously the, with the day injury that you that you actually know of, like the theory does not predict the injuries and, and you know when that happens you have to adjust to it. So, um, from from last year, I mean the theory got the Buccaneers who made it last year, Packers who made it last year, the Rams who made it last year, Washington who made it last year, and Seattle who made it last year. So it's it's only putting in Minnesota, it's only putting in. Only putting in um, Dallas, uh, so that's that's two replacements. So, you know, now the 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 fifty percent thing got to get skewed a little bit because now you got two more teams added. So, you know, more chances for a team that's twelve and four last year who go nine and seven to still make it. So, um, with that being said, that's the NFC. I, I like I like the NFC. I think I think we we talk about NFC. It's so up and down. We never really have, and you have the same. Most time you have the same pretty much teams, but they go up and down other board. Like Saints, if not, the Saints time is like is it over with. It's the Bucks time now. Uh, Packers, you know, Vikings up and down. Packers up and down with it. The NFC West always changing. So um, the NFC is pretty much a, a carousel, and um, I mean, we we pretty much on the same ride. If, if everything that comes out on this on this side. Yeah, let's go and get to the AFC, man. See how we uh how see, it shakes out. I'm gonna look over here. Okay, the AFC. Here are the AFC that the that the uh the profit playoff theory has predicted. Kansas City Chiefs as the AFC West winner, the Baltimore Ravens as the AFC North winner, uh the Buffalo Bills coming in uh for the AFC East, and the Tennessee Titans for the AFC South. Um in the wild card, it has the Cleveland Browns, the Indianapolis Colts, and it has the New England Patriots. So it has the Patriots making the seven seed, um, you know, and I think we when we talked about that, we were saying whether it's Cam or whether it's Matt Jones, you still have the, one of the best coaches in the league, one of the best OCs in the league, and you're going to have a roster that's all coming back from COVID and, and just, just know what to do because Bill Belichick, do your job type situation. So the only thing is, um, so my playoffs, I think, I think, I think my playoffs – had New England on the outside looking in at as an eight or nine spot, uh, more so, and had the um, and had the Chargers in, uh, that we talked about with Justin Herbert in the AFC West episode. Um, I got, I got, but the, the, let me finish that. The theory also has the Chargers and the, and the Steelers on the outside looking at, at the eight and nine spot, um, so they're right there with it. Which you know, I feel like that six through nine can go either way. I feel like Cleveland's a lock to me, I don't know why, but I feel like I feel like. We should see Cleveland in the playoffs. So um, the 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 Colts, that's based off Carson Wentz. The Patriots probably based off quarterback. The Chargers have the quarterback to do it, and the Steelers. You just gotta. I mean, like I said, eight and eight. Uh, with with um the two years ago with uh Doug Hodges and them boys. So Big Ben can at least be nine and seven. So um, they they. I mean, the AFC is what it is. I, I think I think that it's top heavy. It's not like the NFC is going to be the same guys. KC, KC the Baltimore, Buffalo, Tennessee. Uh, I think Browns had asserted themselves into that role as well. But uh, we'll we'll see if they can continue on their, on their success. Yeah, individually, I went Chiefs winning the AFC West, Ravens winning the AFC North, Bills winning the AFC East, and then the Titans repeating uh, as the AFC South champion, and I have Browns, Chargers, and Steelers in the wild card. Okay. Honestly, it was it was tough to leave out the Colts just because I, I love what they did roster wise. I think they they have a solid roster. I like Frank Wright. They made the move to go get Carson Wentz and stuff like that. But with Nelson having surgery, Wentz had surgery. They're both on track to start week one. Get the alert. Wentz is on the COVID list. Mm-hmm. So. 
I'm, I'm just a little concerned about how the Colts are going to navigate this season, man. So um, I have them barely on the outside looking in, but it would not surprise me if the, you know, if they do make it, you know, as we, as, you know, as everything shakes out, it wouldn't surprise me if they did make it. The, um, uh, the, the Patriots thing, I'm, 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 I'm on the fence it's, with that. That's that's. I, I, I have I have them right there on the edge too, right there with the Colts. Mm. But the thing is, I, I need a little more certainty of when, of, of how the QB play is going to shake out. Yeah. Because you look at the schedule, you look at that first seven, man. They could go five and two. That that first seven is very realistic. They can go five and two. Yep. And there's no way they'll tank it on the back end. Mm. Because I mean, you get Miami Jets, Saints, Bucks, Houston Cowboys, Jets. That that's five and two worthy if yeah. you're playing your best ball, no matter who's the QB. And then you got to think out of ten more games, you can you can you can get five more, and right. that'll have you right there, no right matter there. who the QB mm-hmm. is. Because you'll you? get Jacks on the back end. You'll get Atlanta, Carolina, and just because of how good you are, and other teams. Cola situation or trap games, you should be able to squeeze out one or two more and get to about 10 wins. So the, the Patriots one, man, it, it's hard to count out Belichick twice in a row. That's why they went and spent so much money. So that Patriots one could be a tricky one. And even the Dolphins one, man, like I, they – I was about to they, say, that's the team that's they – They could be a tricky one too. They're in the same division. Yeah. And then their QB situation with Tua um, – how ideal. how good will he be? Will he make a leap? I mean, of course, he was coming off the hip surgery. Brian Flores had no problem. Hey, we trying to win these games, pull him, <laughs> throw Fitzpatrick in. Let's see how it play out. He had no problem doing that. So will Jacoby Brissett be able to do the same thing that Fitzpatrick did? Or will Tua just be so good that you don't have to go to your backup? And then you got to still always consider that rumor of the boogeyman, Deshaun Watson out there. Lingering mm-hmm. for trades. I mean, his his off the field situation is terrible. Um, if he did those things that he's being accused of, he'll probably never play football again unless it's in the longest yard. So <laughs> let's just <laughs> let's see how that plays out. If the Dolphins make that move, I mean that'll that'll be crazy, somewhat because you got you're you're weighing out risk versus reward. You get yeah. a, a franchise QB. But you're getting some all-time crazy charge off the field. Well, he may not ever see the light of day for you on the field. So you got to keep all that in mind, Miami. But, yeah, the Colts, Miami, and Patriots are three teams I have on the outside looking in. So I have I, – on my outside looking in, I actually have Miami in. Um, I, I have them. So the last game of the season for Week 18 is New England versus Miami. Um, that's the, That is the – the winner that I think makes it in, right? Uh, for me, for me, my my the only difference and I is have. That Miami? So yeah, I was the only, only difference I have is um, I got so I got I think the top five is the same: like Chiefs, uh, Bills, Ravens, uh, Titans, uh, Titans, Browns. That's a, I think that I think that's in. I, I we both got the same thing. Theory got the same thing. I think we can go and lock those five in there. Uh, but like I said earlier, the six through nine spot is a difference. The theory has Pittsburgh on the outside looking in. I don't have Pittsburgh at nine either. I have them a little lower, which insert Miami into it. And I actually have Miami beating New England in, in New Miami and making the playoffs. I also had the Chargers as my seven. So I got the Colts on the outside looking in too. So we both on the same on the same there where it's hard to leave the Colts out how good roster there, 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 there is. But, I mean, they probably be at the eight, nine spot. And I think that's another division where you just like the NFC North, where you have to win your division because you're risking everything else. Um, because it's, it's only two. Cause think about it, that's the same type of thing. It's only two. It's only two guys that we believe in the, in both divisions. Um, the, the Vikings, Packers versus and then versus the Colts, Titans. You, if you don't win your division, now we're sitting there thinking, hmm, do you even make it in? So um, I think the Colts, because the Colts don't make don't win the division, they probably don't make it in. Um, so. That that would be my. I'll have Miami and Chargers in there, which would be crazy because two years ago they were just drafting their their franchise quarterback, and, <laughs> and and if Tua makes the leap, like you said, you give him another year with the hip, uh, actual off uh, uh, actual training camp, he could he could be 
at least solid. Even, like I'm not saying you have to be a star. Like because Fitzpatrick wasn't superstar esque last year, and the roster is too good for you know for good be for just 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 plug and play and you'd be fine. So, um, I, I'm interested to see how you know how you know how 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 accurate the theory is going to be. Um, I, I I do want to leave this this note when we get out of here that the QBs matter, coaching matter, division division matters, and does your roster overcome or let you down? And in, in, in the back end, and you know, for the most part, teams who take advantage of the divisions, the Cowboys, right, uh, Washington football team, the Buccaneers could get take advantage of their of their division. Teams who who if they make it out, you gotta believe one of the best teams in the, uh, in the league, the Ravens, the Browns, because of their division, the Rams, Fort Nine of Seattle, when because the division is so hard and every game matters to to them. So uh, with, with with that being said, that's I mean that's really what it is. Like if you have everything, every division it is, is different, um, and how much the QB and coach plays a role in that can can basically put you up there. So we pretty much got the same teams as the theory minus you know a couple a couple teams. Uh, I think I think we're pretty much higher on Arizona and Miami than the theory is. So you know, and that's because of what that's, that's that's three good. I mean, two divisions that got three good teams in already. And then you get them. Yep. So you know, outside the Jets being the worst team out of those two divisions, but it's it's hard it's hard to break through when your division so stacked. So I mean that's that, that's pretty good. I, I think I think when we re- review this, what week we gonna do week eight, week nine, we can come back and review to see how the progress of the playoff teams are going. We'll see we'll see if you know what happened. You know. Yeah, we'll we'll come back around week week nine, and then of course week eighteen. That'll be the end of the season, so we'll see how it all shook out. But yeah, we'll definitely do like a week nine halfway point update and see how see if anybody's QB has been benched or did anybody <laughs> get hurt, and then you got to reevaluate with the rankings. Uh, mm-hmm. J.K. Dobbins get well soon, stuff like that. Um, exactly. Any blockbuster trades? Just we just got to see how everything shakes out, but. For the most part, we really don't change anything. We just kind of update it according. Like if somebody's QB is playing like a, the best QB in, in a division, you up. gotta you gotta move them up accordingly. Yeah. And that and that and that can change change the whole life. I mean, 49ers, We say they're the fourth best cor- fourth best quarterback. Could Jimmy G or Trey Lance ascend? I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's not it's not like it's it's not like it's not possible, but it's gonna be hard. Yeah. But 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 Justin Herbert came up pretty fast. And now, yeah. and now we got the Chargers like on the outside looking in, but based on the theory. But I got them in my playoffs, so you know. Yeah, so I, I got them. I got in the playoffs. So, too. I got them winning twelve games. So yeah. So we we both we both got the Chargers right there. So you know that's that's gonna be very interesting. So once again, the probably playoff theory: NFC side, Buccaneers, Packers, Rams, Cowboys, Vikings, Seahawks, and the Washington Football Team. In the AFC: You got the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Bills, the Tennessee Titans, Cleveland Browns, the Colts, and the Patriots. With the 49ers, Saints, Chargers, and Pittsburgh Steelers on the outside looking in, um, but hey, hey, I, I, I think I think we're gonna be more right. I think I think the theory got 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 to put some more respect on Arizona and Miami name, but we'll see we'll see we'll see how all that plays out. Yeah, we got to see if you know if the individual rankings shake out better or does uh does what we forecast shake out better. So we got we got to see. We got to see so. Uh, I appreciate everybody for joining the private playoff theory, man. That it was it was fun doing this, these shows. Uh, stay tuned to everything on the Wild Card uh, Network, uh, beawildcard.com. Check all that stuff out. And we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna take a little break. We're gonna take a little break, y'all. We, we got we got let, let some game, games go, and we'll be back uh, to talk about some more sports. Uh, basketball coming around. It'll be right here before yep. you know it too. So you know, so uh, y'all stay tuned to all that. Appreciate Peter Rashad. We out.